Okay, we on live, Bob. All right, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, I'm Yashar Rala. It's great to from New Orleans coming back at another lesson. But before we get started, as always, we're going to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh. Double honesty, apostles and elders of the most known, and Shabbat Shalom to the whole elect. So, this lesson, we're just going to go into how we're not actually worthy of mercy, but we're going to receive it anyway due to you know the grace of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. And a lot of our people, uh, this word has gone out to the four winds, as it tells you in uh, in Romans 10. And a lot of our people now know that they're Israel. And you have certain certain brothers um, and Jake's in the world. They feel like they're more more holy or more righteous or more deserving of mercy than other Israelites. And we have to keep in mind that we have a, a lot of people that are going to come in at the last minute. They're going to be rough around the edges. And this is all about the Lord's mercy and not not our own opinion. So we're going to start with uh, with Second Ezra 4. God, this is the book of Second Ezra, chapter four, in verse twenty-four, and it reads, "And we pass away out of the world as grasshoppers, and our life is astonishment and fear, and we are not worthy to obtain mercy." All right. So we are not worthy to obtain mercy, and the scriptures liken us unto grasshoppers, worms, basically just uh, helpless animals and helpless insects that are at the mercy. Of a higher power, and that's where we find ourselves in these last days. You know, we're at the mercy of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, who set up Esau over us due to our transgression. And when you look on the news, every day judgment goes out. You know, at any moment something horrific could happen to you. You know, brothers get into accidents. You know, things happen that you know are all orchestrated by Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, and we're not worthy of mercy. So every day, you know, I remember, uh, you know, Brother Kaya said a while back, like every. Every day is really judgment day. All right. We're judged every day. So it's not just about one one specific day in the near future where or, or in the distant future. And you have to look forward to this day. No, it's every single day. And we're not worthy of that mercy. So that's knowing that should keep you in a state of uh, humility. Keep going. I got the strip to, to back you up. Come on, you got it. Uh, well, this is the only but goody, but let me get it. This is Psalms 23 and 1. It says, the Lord is my shepherd. I should not want he, he making me to lie down in green pastures. Says he 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 leading me beside the still waters. He restored my soul. He leading me in the path in the paths of righteousness, but for his name's sake. Now this is the point. Yea, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death? I I would fear no evil, for thou art for thou art my thou, thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. But the point is, uh, walking through the valley of the shadow of the dead. You gotta break it down. Okay. And when you go back to Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, one of our curses is that we'd have no assurance of life. And here we are in Babylon with no no assurance that we're gonna, when you go outside, when you walk outside your door, you have no assurance that you're gonna make it back home that day. All right. That's why, you know, brothers, we, we are very keen on, you know, uh, communication, letting brothers know, okay, I got home safe, because you might not, man. <laughs> it's all up to the Lord's mercy. You could, Leave camp, get hit by a train, anything could happen, man. But uh, they didn't have brothers in the past, you know, couple of months, year, then passed away in the troop, man, in the GMS, you know, for various different things. Kind of. so we, we all subject to it. Yeah, we're, we're not immortal yet, Jake. All right, you can still die. All right, if you didn't know that. But uh, getting back to that, uh, read that, that second entrance again. Come on. Back in Second Ezra, the fourth chapter in verse 24, it says, and we pass away out of the world as grasshoppers and our life is astonishment and fear and we are not worthy to obtain mercy. What will he then do unto his name whereby we are called of these things have I asked? Right. And, you know, it's the spirit the elder just read that in Psalms. He said for his holy name's sake which we're going to get that in Ezekiel because really the Lord putting his name on us is really the only reason that we're going to be saved. And Jake really doesn't get that. If Jake understood that there's no way he'd be calling the Lord Christ or saying you could, you know, the name of the Lord doesn't matter. He he put his name on us so that he would have to save us because otherwise what's the difference between an Israelite and a heathen? The fact that we can jump high, we can, we can dress and we can rap. Like that's not, that's not what makes us holy. All right. The Lord's name, and his commandments that will make us holy. But uh, you can get that, Ezekiel. We'll break it down. 
Khan. This is Ezekiel 36 and 19. It says, And I scattered them among the heathen, and they were dispersed through the countries. According to their way and according to their doings, I judged them. Right. Again, going back to Deuteronomy 28, the 64th verse tells you that he would scatter us amongst all people. And this is what happens when you get scattered amongst all people. Keep going. Verse 20. It says, and when they entered unto the heathen, whither they went, they profaned my holy name. When they said to them, these are the people of Yahweh and are gone forth out of his land. Right. It says, when we entered into the land of the heathen, we profane the name of the Lord. All right. When you eat pork, when you commit adultery, when you become Hellenized and start following Greek customs, when you start looking up to the so-called white man and believing in his, in his philosophies and his ways, you profane the name of the Lord because we're a holy people and he put his name on us. So now the heathen are like, these are the Israelites? These niggas? Like, what? You know, we, we bring out history, articles, scriptures, for first and foremost. But people are like, there's no way these are the men of the Lord. There's no way these are the people. These are God's children. Okay, they, they're they completely gone. They got tattoos on their face. They're just smoking weed, doing all sorts of abominations. Why? We we profane the name of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. And none of us are worthy of mercy. If it wasn't for Yahweh Shai's sacrifice, we'd all be finished. And it's, it's very important for Jake and the truth to keep that in mind because a lot of our people, they, they start wearing fringes, they stop eating pork, they start uh, keeping certain commandments, and then they look at Jake, who's still in that Gentile state of mind, and they look at them like, oh, there's no way they could be saved, as if you already have a shot on, uh, on a chariot. None of us know if we're going to make it. You want to say something, Kalari? Kind of had a uh, scripture to back up all right, how, how the nations look at us. Uh, this uh, Lamentations 2 and 15, it says, all that passed by clapped their hands at thee. They hissed and wagged their head at the daughter of Jerusalem, saying, is this the city that men call the perfection of, of beauty, the joy of the whole earth? Yeah. And, <clears throat> and, and, and really, you know, if we had a, the apple of the Lord's eye, I, we, we supposed to hold ourselves as, as that way. And we understand, all right, through the curses and, okay, <clears throat> will we, will we, the, the punishment that we're going through that we're being brought to a lower state, all right? But these other nations, they understand who we are, like the brother was going into. They look at us with tattoos in our face, our women shaking their, you know, their asses and shit of that nature. And they're like, damn, are these really those people? But you got it, bro. Because we profane the name of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, so much so that it takes faith to even believe that we're going to make it out of this. So keep going in that Ezekiel. And I got a preaching um, for you too. Okay. This verse 21, it says, But I had pity for mine holy name, which the house of Israel had profaned among the heathen, whither they went. Okay, Therefore, going. say unto the house of Israel, thus said Yahweh power, I do not this for your sakes, O house of Israel, but for my holy name's sake, which ye have profaned among the heathen, whither ye went. Right, and that's the key point right there. It says, uh, I do not this for your sakes, O house of Israel. I'm not saving you because you're righteous. I'm not saving you because you're this great people. I'm doing this for my holy name. Yahweh put his name on his people and we went off. But the, the, uh, there's a fine print in the old covenant, which is that after you go off, you're going to call to mind the blessings and the curses. You're going to repent from your evil ways, and you're going to get brought back into the land after you get rinsed clean. And that starts with this ministry. That starts with Yahweh making us clean through his word. That's why we're being saved. Okay, that's the only reason. It's not uh, how many fringes you staple to a T-shirt. It's not about how many. It's not even about how many lessons you do, how many videos you do. You know, brothers in Great Millstone, you can't really, you can't make yourself of the elect. We just, you know, fight to make our call on an election sure. But at the end of the day, none of us are worthy of mercy. It's all up to you. How about Shemi How Shai? Tells you that in Romans 9, but you you got it up, right? Kind. Hey, this precept backs up everything you've been saying. We we can't save ourselves. We 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 have mercy, you know, right now to do the work, but we don't know if we're gonna endure to the end. As it says, many are called, but few are chosen. So that constantly should keep you in a humble spirit to be saying on your P's and Q's because any day. Hey, any day could be your judgment day for something you did in this life or in the past life. Hey, can I bring out one to what you just just said? 
kind of. I lo- it went away, but then you kind of you kind of brought it up real fast, and either one of you brothers can break it down. But definitely what what uh, Raya just said. This this is Deuteronomy twenty eight and sixty five. I'm reading sixty six too. It says, and, and among these nations, thou shalt find no ease. Neither sh- neither shall shall the sole of thy feet have rest, but the Lord shall give thee their trembling heart and the filling of the eyes and the sor- sorrow of mine. And this is the point right here. And thy life shall hang in doubt before thee, and thou shalt thou shall fear day and night, and 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 shall have no assurance of life of thy life. Okay. You mind if I get a number one? Yeah. Hey, and if you further read in Deuteronomy twenty-eight, what does it say? Cursed shall you be when you go out, and cursed shall you be when you come in. As soon as we come through our mother's womb, the curses are on us. As soon as soon as you come out, the curses are on you. Curse shall you be in the field, which we know the field is the world. Curse shall you be in the city. Hey, we and as the elder brother brought out, hey, our life our life is constantly hanging in doubt. We're in further back up what he brought out earlier. We're in the valley of the shadow of death, where any any wrong move you make could, could be your final move, your last move before you get sent straight back to the spirit world. If I, if I add real quick, we we curse before we even come out the womb. They have that that billboard that says the uh, the most dangerous place, and an Israelite uh, t- for Israelite is the, the black woman's womb. Yep. You got like a 50-50 chance of even making it. To, you just as soon as you leave the spirit world, you you in the womb, you fighting for your life, man. It, it was the same, saying the apocrypha through through her, we all die. <laughs> yeah. we, Hey, either you you dying in the womb, or when you come into this world, you coming in with the with the curses already stamped on you, and it's just whether the Most High is going to have mercy on you or not. But just to back up a hey, the topic of the lesson, hey, it's not through us whether we make it or not. It's not through us. It, our our righteousness is as filthy rags. It's through the will of the Most High that we have have mercy and make it. But this is Ephesians chapter two verse eight. For by grace are ye saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of the Most High. Plain. That couldn't be any more plain. Not of yourselves. All right, Jake, really want to be in that spirit of saving himself. All right, you got you got a lot of a lot, a lot of people that say, oh, you can't save, uh, no man can save you. You got to save yourself. Nobody's coming out the sky to save you. You got that, uh, that SYSBM hashtag, save yourself, black man. You, you can't save yourself. All right, if you could, you wouldn't be paying taxes. You wouldn't be uh, getting sick. You wouldn't be in pain after playing football. All right, we we all in, in these chains of darkness, man. We need we need mercy. That's that's a must. We need mercy from your and Shai, and that's that's the first step to to getting salvation, knowing that you need mercy from a higher power. You mind if I read verse nine? You got it. Okay. Not of works, lest any man should boast. There you go. We have a lot of boasters in these other camps. Which we, the Lord is breaking that up right before our eyes. You can clearly see the Lord's not dealing with any of these proud boasters. You know, the, the biggest armbands, the the giant border, just trying to make a spectacle of yourself instead of preaching the word and truth and sincerity. This word is all we need. You want to say something, Kalai? Kai, I think uh, Kaya, you had a something you wanted to say before me. I'll get it out to you. Go ahead, brother. Kai, I I had a quick precept. This is um. Lamentations, the third chapter and verse 22, and it reads, it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. And, hey, that's really plain, but hey, we're not consumed as a people, all right, because we're cornered off as a, as a nation on all sides, all right? All of these other nations, they definitely have us in the palms of their hands, okay? They can... If if it wasn't for you, how about Shem Yao Shai, man? We we would be utterly destroyed, man. All right, because that's really their intent. They really want to, you know, do away with us. But it's because of you, how about Shem Yao Shai, that we are able to still continue on, and it, it, we eventually got to this point, all right, through the Lord, that we can preach the word and and start to rebuild as a nation through you, Shai, man. All right, you got it, brother. You got it, Kaya. Con, this is uh, 2 Timothy 1. And uh, I started at 8 punters and 9. It says, be, be now therefore ashamed, 
be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but be thou partake of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power, according to the power of God, of our power, who has saved us and called us with his and holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in the Mashaki, I was shot before the world began. Okay, that is beautiful. All right, so the elect has already been chosen, all right, preordained from the foundation of the earth, which means what? It's not according to works. At right? the same way, we go into Romans 9, we explain how Esau was condemned before he was even born. All right, Jacob was chosen before he was born. So it's all due to the mercies of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. There's nothing we did to make ourselves worthy of salvation. All right, and you knowing that should it, it's either going to do one of two things. You're just going to be like, well, look, if I'm of the elect, I ain't got to do nothing. I can just kick back, and you know I'll make it, which is a reprobate spirit. Or you'll be so grateful to receive this opportunity that you're going to go hard for the Lord. All right, it's going to make you uh, learn the scriptures, devour the scriptures, and eventually teach. That's that's it. Hey, you guys, Maggie. All right, the Psalms. 85 and 7, show us thy mercy, O Yahweh, and grant us thy salvation. Come on, you got it. Okay, come So, yeah, we, you know, we're asking him to show mercy because, like you say, like it goes back in Job, I mean, whoever uh, perish being innocent, man, you know, so he's righteous in executing that judgment on us, you know? And, you know, and that's what we're doing totally really just asking for mercy because we don't know whether you know what our end gonna be and if we when our end do because uh, like the scriptures say some of y'all gonna taste won't taste the death but some will but we asking for mercy if we do take you know taste that death and it says grant us our salvation you know so we pretty much asking or begging for you know salvation because it's not guaranteed just because we're doing this work though so it's all by the will of Yahweh Shimei Hosha, who gets it and who don't. Okay. It's of his mercies that we're not consumed, as the brother read. Uh, Kabar, if you can give me 1 Timothy 1. You, you have something? Yeah. Actually, yeah, I had two. Okay, you, you got it up. Okay. It's uh, Sirach 17, verse, uh, I'm going to start verse 20. None of their righteous deeds are hid from him. But all their sins are are before the Lord. But the Lord being gracious and knowing his workmanship, neither left nor forsook them, but spared them. And the main point, even though he, you know, we got we have uh, sins that's a uh, word of the devil, hey, the Lord sparing us, you know, from these times, do his mercies. You know, if, if we just hope that hey, he spares to the end. Well, hey, we be being out of those cherries and be the first to uh, obtain a everlasting life, man, that blessing. Yeah. What's crazy what the brother is saying too because we got to understand this we're not just dealing with stuff in this present time or sins that we're dealing with in this present time we can be dealing with some shit in our past lives the Lord punishing us for alright and it just is what it is man God we really don't know how much mercy we need alright we know what we did in this life you don't know what you were doing in Rome alright Corinthian, like Corinth, Greece was a real wild, freaky place. You don't know what you were doing back then, which, matter of fact, uh, Kaya, if you can give me uh, 1 Corinthians 6 and start at 9, Baba Gusha, and, and hold that on deck, Kabar. I'm going to get your next one, too. Because that's an excellent point. When you read the scriptures, you read, you know, our people worshiping idols, committing all sorts of vile acts. You don't know if you're reading about yourself. Jake, Jake read the scriptures like, oh, that was... That was them. Oh, that was the two thirds. Oh, that was this person. There's members of the elect that were doing those things too, but they received mercy. You got it, Doc. This first Corinthians six and nine, it says, "Know ye not that unrighteous, the unrighteous, shall not inherit the kingdom of our power? Uh, Be, not deceived. Be not deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate." nor abuses of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revelers, 
nor extortioners shall in inherit the kingdom of our power. Okay, keep going. And such were some of you. And okay. such were some of you. So the Israelites at Corinth, Greece, all right, the church that was following Yahweh Shai, some of them were adulterers, some of them were sodomites, some of them were fornicators, some of them were effeminate, which when you go into that, that's, you know, in, in Greece, you had men that had, you know, little boys. It was, it was wild, man. All right, that that whole Spartan freak generation, that that's that's real, man. That actually happened, and it wasn't just Esau. You, you see that today. You see a lot of Jakes that are caught up in that in the church. So, if the Lord could wash them and make them, matter of fact, uh, read read the whole verse eleven, Baba Gisha. Yeah, the Israelite man. All right, all Israelite men of all twelve tribes, especially that them Judites, you the staple child for the new alphabet alphabet uh, boys and girls. I'm gonna say that you make you make the headlines for that shit. When you you go to Atlanta, the first faces you see is who? Jakes, man. You know, niggas got heels on, 250 pounds, look like an NFL linebacker, all pro linebacker. And who it is? It's Jake. You go into that Latin world in, in California, all right, on that West Coast, who you gonna see? You're gonna see them Latin tribes, all right? Pumpkin. If, that, if, that, if that's a, even a word, man. All right? And you, like the brother said, y'all was doing the same shit back then. All right? So that's why the brother's saying, you don't know if you can you getting punished for some shit in your past life, man. All this life here. You know, you know, remember that old game, pull a pull a stick? You get the longest stick and shit? Okay. Hey, that's, 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 that's all we dealing with right now with the mercy of the most high, man. We just pulling them sticks. I'm happy just to pull a stick right now. I don't, I don't care if it's long or short. I'm just happy though right now, man. To pull a stick. I'm just a part of this. You know, it was up to the most high though, man. On, on everything else. Go ahead. Okay. Reverse eleven, Bible Gizo. Mm -hmm. And uh Koshab, give me uh, Isaiah one, start at nine. You got it up. It says, and such were some of you, mm -hmm. but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified. But ye are justified in the name of the Mashiach Yahweh Shai and by the spirit of our power. Right. And does Jake believe that? Do you believe that the Lord can wash someone and make them clean? Somebody that's an adulterer, an idolater, a, a sodomite, a weirdo, somebody could actually wash them and make them clean. That's something you have to have faith in because Jake really, again, Jake will come into the truth and be like, well, look, I never, I never got tattoos on my face. I'm not like that guy. Oh, I never sold drugs. I'm not like that guy. Oh, I never murdered anybody. I'm not like that guy. But you, first of all, you don't know what you did in a previous life. Second of all, in this life, you were still committing adultery. You were still, okay, let's say you, you didn't smoke crack. You smoked weed, okay? You, you, didn't, you didn't kill someone literally, but you, you committed adultery, which is likened under the same thing. Or you, you might have defrauded someone. When you go into the scriptures, when you defraud someone and, and take away their money and keep them from uh, providing for their family, that's the same as murder too. So- you you like weighing your sins against another man's is, is totally off. That's the spirit of of uh I'm glad I'm, I'm not like him. You know, the, the guy that was uh you know, he was boasting that what was it, the the publican, he was beating his chest. He was like, Look, I just want to receive mercy, which we may have to get that. But um push up, you can get that that Isaiah. We're gonna get back to you, Kabar, in a minute. Okay, it's Isaiah one and nine. It says, Except the Lord of hosts had left unto us a very small remnant. We should have been as Sodom, and we should have been like unto Gomorrah. Right. If the Lord hadn't left us a small remnant, our whole nation would be finished. Look at look at the chemicals that's in the water. All right. It's turning frogs gay. It's turning Jake gay. All right. Look at the media. Look at what what Jake is programmed to be. If the Lord hadn't established a remnant, we'd all be finished. All right. Jake yes. would be just totally freaked out. So when you look at Jake, that's in that state, your first thought obviously is, okay, this is off. This is disgusting. But your second thought should be, wait a minute. Some of them could be saved. Some of them could actually repent, okay? Because we just read in Corinthians that that Jake that was into that, they actually repented and followed Yahweh Shai. You got it, Kalai. I got I got to want to back at what you just said, though. Okay. This is uh, Titus 3 and 3. It says, for we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving, di serving diverse lusts and pleasures, right? Living... Living in malice and envy, hateful, and hating one another. But after the kind, after the kindness and love of Yahweh, our Savior towards man, 
a period. And this is the point right here, verse 5. Uh, it says, not by his works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercies, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. You got that. There it is again. All right. Being saved through the mercies and the washing of the word, not through our own works. Because as, as the elders read, brothers have diverse lusts, man. Jacob would be like, oh, oh, such and such is a sodomite. Meanwhile, you you didn't have threesomes with women, all right, which is you causing them to, to commit homosexual acts, even though you're not doing it. You're it's it's all wickedness, man. It's all adultery, it's all freakism. So this idea that you're better than the next man because his sins seem to be uh, quote unquote worse. The Lord doesn't look at it like that. He looks at all of our righteousness as filthy rags. But you got it, Kalai. You you got it, Kaya. Yeah. I'll okay. speak after you. Current, uh, I've got two real quick, brother. This um Romans 5 and 21, it says that as sin had reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by the Mashiach Yahushai, our Lord. You got it. Yeah. So even as, as sin had reigned unto death, meaning what it, it was uh prolonged all the way unto death, which which sin brings unto death, even so yeah. grace be extension from what the beginning all the way through righteousness. Because according to Wisdom of Solomon one one, it tells you, well, wisdom of Solomon one, I believe it may be like 16, it says righteousness is immortal. So rich really. Righteousness is forever. So grace follows righteousness. So when, every time we turn unto righteousness, that prolonged our grace in such a way, right? But the Lord had us turn to righteousness so the grace could stay with us. Because really, technically, grace never left us, man. Grace never left us because even in our sin, we died. And that was grace of the Lord. Yeah, hey, I killed y'all, right? But then regenerated y'all and rewashed y'all in a word like y'all can not say, and brought y'all again back through grace, man. Right, right now we call the whiff of grace. And in the end, right, grace be the beginning of you, then it's gonna finish you, right? Which is is like fate aligns with uh, grace. They're like the same, they're uh, uh, the finisher of our fate is gonna, grace gonna finish with our fate, man. That's the only way we gonna get it, all right? You don't just get fate alone, grace gotta uh, intersect with it. Right, it's gonna meet and it's gonna intersect or it's gonna cross each other, and that's how you're gonna get both. But this uh the, and you got it, you got this one, right? Uh it says uh uh there's a sin. Man, we're looking for it. All right. So lucky, brother. But if if one of y'all brothers know where it's at, because it's not in first John 5 when it says that. There's a sin uh, punishable unto debt. Then there's a sin subject to forgiveness. But I'll bring that back around. You got to do I'm a while, brother. That's in First John 5. Yeah, I'm in right. 5. Can't fucking find it. Uh, you 16, got it. 16 verse. I think it's 16 verse. 16. Yeah, you got it, dog. You got it. I want to make a point with the the grace and the, and the sin. Because I brought out the first... You know, the first one I bought out, the Romans. But go ahead, Salaki, brother. Okay. Uh, you have one, Kaliah, before we move on? No, I, I just really want to make a, a quick comment because I think it's, you know, it's, it's a beautiful thing. You know, we sitting here speaking upon grace. And what we had, what, past these last past two weeks, all right, one of the, to me, all right, I can't really – Name a person who really is more, you know, vile than that one woman, uh, Sukiana. All right, whether she repent or not, that's all up to the Lord. But it's a beautiful, you know, account, man. And it's really, it's really, all right, uh, a, a reminder unto the Akia, man, that's in the body. Like, man, the Lord forgave you for all of the things that you know that you've done, and well, we hope that He forgive us for all of the things that we've done. Okay. Like I said, I really, I really can't put my finger on a, a person which there are people worse than her, but out in the public, out in the open, and just look at what time we in. Okay, we at the brink of all out chaos, all right? World War Three, the MOTB, all right? The Lord just sending that reminder out there, like, yo, 
you y'all just really working off my grace right now. You just hope that you within it. All right. I just really wanted to make that point, brother, because it's, it's funny that we talking about uh, uh, mercies and grace. And we just had that happen within the last past, you know, couple days or a week or whatever. Uh, you got it, brother. That's a prime example. Uh, get a uh, first Timothy one and fourteen, Bible Kusha, the back what you just said. Come. This is the book of First Timothy, chapter one and verse fourteen. Oh, Salaka, so hit the wrong one. And yeah, it reads, it. it says, And the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant with the with faith and love which is in Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai. Right, it says the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant, all right, which abundant is already exceeding. So <laughs> exceeding abundant means just it's overflowing, all right? The grace of the Lord is overflowing and it's, it's overwhelming to the elect because when you think about all the things you've done in this life alone, you know that we're not worthy of mercy, all right? So for you to not have mercy on another Israelite, even, you know, Sukihana, perfect mm -hmm. example, just complete, just bow. But, you know, as I told brothers, that's the way we look at her is the way the Lord looks at Israel. He's likened us unto a woman and we've committed all sorts of filth and abomination with these heathen, with these idols. That's how he's looking at us. The same way we look at her is how he looks at us. And it's very important to remember that in your walk. Don't get to thinking, OK, I got fringes now. I, I didn't memorize a few precepts. I didn't highlighted a few scriptures in my Bible. So now I'm good. None of us are good. None of us deserve salvation, man. If, if I could say it's it's you know the Lord could have chose anybody to use that as an example because that flowed throughout all of Israel. That ain't just stop at brothers' Instagrams or group chats. That flowed throughout the whole you know Israel, man. All right, brothers in a no. And then he could have chose anybody to to represent that, but he chose a, a person who can you know has a past. A, a, a present, you can go back and search up the different vile acts of this person. I didn't use that one person as a, rep, a, a representation, man, of his mercy. Right. But you got it, bro. Yeah, I'll keep reading on that, that Timothy. Con, verse 15, and it reads, this is a faithful saying and worthy of all exception." That Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai, came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. Right. Apostle Paul described himself as a chief sinner. He didn't say, well, look, I'm I'm Paul, the Lord dealing with me. He's not dealing with you. Or I'm, you know, I'm, I'm this and that. He described himself as chief of the sinners. And that's what the Lord came for. All right. He said, I've, I've what? I'm not called the righteous unto repentance, but sinners. All right. Those that are whole don't need a physician. And we... We sick, man. At the end of the day, our people need healing. And if you don't think that about yourself, you're bugged out. If you think you're whole right now, then you don't need a physician. Calm. But uh, I got one keep going you. on that, then we we gonna get you, Kaya. I know you you got something. I got one after. Hey, 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 two of them real fast. But I'm gonna get this just one real fast for you. I'm why this is uh Isaiah Isaiah 64 and six. It says, "But we are all as unclean things." And all our righteousness are as filthy rags, all right. And we are, and we all do fade as a leaf. And our iniquities, like the wind, have taken us away. Yeah, right. yeah. When you go into that that filthy rag, it's talking about a menstrual cloth, something that's that's uh, that you abhor, that you just cast away completely. That's how the Lord looks at our righteousness. So you jakes that that really think your fringes are gonna get you into the kingdom, that's. Ultimately, the Lord is saving us for his name's sake. And you want to be uh, counted under that, that hedge, under the blood of Yahweh Shai Mashiach, which starts with you believing in the name. We can't stress that enough. All right. The name of the Father is Yahweh. All right. It's not, it's not God. It's not Yahweh. It's Yahweh. The name of the Son is Yahweh Shai. And he's the sacrifice, which, which makes our, uh, our righteousness is still as filthy rags, but we're saved through his name, all right, through his blood. Not of ourselves. If you don't understand that, you really don't understand the Bible. Period. All right. This this last one I have backs up what you were saying about the Sukihana situation, which whether whether you know, all in all, she gonna be right. She gonna be righteous in the kingdom of heaven. All right. This this one back to what you were saying, huh? One way or the other. Yeah. yeah. One way or the other. 
This is Sirach chapter 8, verse 5. It says, approach not a man that turneth from sin. And this is the point right here. But remember that we all are worthy of punishment. God. Yeah, that's that's a hard one. You got to read that one again. I, I had that too. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie. Yeah, this is Sirach <laughs> chapter 8, verse 5. Reproach not a man that turneth from sin, but remember that we all are worthy of punishment. Yeah. Oh, I, I didn't do that when I was in the world. Oh, I never did. I never went that far. Oh, I, I'm not like them niggas over there. Oh, those those are the two thirds. Well, maybe, maybe not. All right. It's all about enduring until the end. And until we're at the end, you can't say for sure that you're of that number. The reason we have such such faith and such confidence and boldness is because we we're doing what the Lord said that the men of the Lord would be doing. And we haven't wavered. We haven't faltered. So that that boosts our faith. Our faith grows every day because our grace grows every day. But at the end of the day, we still know in the back of our mind, wait a minute, that this brother was in GMS a month ago. Now he's bugged out. Oh, this brother was in GMS like, you know, two years ago. Now he's out of his body. You know, the Lord will give you examples. Like, look, just because I give you my name and my truth and my doctrine, that ain't it. I could I could take it from you. That keeps you in that that spirit of, OK, I still got work to do. What you got, to Kaya? Yeah, that grace, you know, as it says at the top of this uh this chapter results of justification. So how then are we justified? This Romans five and one, it says, therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with our power through the Mashiach Yahushai. We have peace with Yahweh through the Mashiach Yahushai, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace. Now, Jacob think faith is the end of a man, but really our faith carries, carries us to our grace. But you can get a man that's faithful in all outdoors. If he not predestined, hey, he, he, he ain't getting it, man. He got to have the grace. The grace got to complete his faith, man. So really, you ain't like, okay, the faith is the end of a man. But unless the Lord had grace on him, there's no mercy in place, man. All right? It says, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace. So we're going from faith into grace, man. All right. Wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of glory. Now, I'm going to get this in the NLT. It says, because of our faith, the Mashiach Yahushua had brought us into this place of undeserved privilege. Now, y'all can, I mean, I'm a wife been bringing out, uh, even though we're not worthy of grace, all uh, right, but we're still going to get it. Okay. It says, and a perfect word for this is what? The undeserved privilege, all right? It says, because of our faith, the Mashiach Yahushai brought us into this place of undeserved privilege where we now stand and we confidently and, jo and joyfully look forward to sharing God's glory, which God glory is the mercy. You got it, right? Yeah, that's beautiful. It's undeserved, okay? Undeserved. It's we didn't we didn't do anything to deserve mercy at the end of the day all right a lot of us weren't even looking for the truth you just came across an israelite video or you were just walking down the street you saw a camp all right the lord the lord actually knows who his men are all of our hairs are counted he knows okay this this brother he can handle this he can handle that he actually knows how much temptation each man can handle it's all completely up to the lord it's out of our hands so you knowing that you should uh, go even uh, 10 times harder all right going back to that baruch but, um, oh, that's, that's why I said we're prisoners of hope, man. God. And I got this right here in the in the uh, Merriam Webster dictionary. And it says, hope, it says, a desire of something good accomplished with a slight or at least a slight expectation of attaining it or a belief that it is attainable. God. Right? And that's the state that we're in, man. We just, we just hoping that we hoping that we'd be saved, man. We don't know. Then that, like, like I said, that's the beauty of this truth too, because you don't know. But what, what, what drives you to keep on going? To try to find out, man. You know, because ain't, ain't no, I don't know. I haven't met a brother yet that got the memo. And his name is checked off in the book of life, man. We don't know that, you know. We don't know. Even, even the, the you know, we call you know, the whole thing with two thirds. We say that too. We, we, we base it on the acts of how Jake act. We don't have the memo all two thirds. If you have a guy today, act like act like a two third, he can change tomorrow. All through the grace and power of Yahweh Shah Shah. So we don't know. Even our friends. You know, we, we got we got friends and family members that we do love and we, we go hard at them with this truth. 
but you got to leave that window open too for them. They might change tomorrow, next week, next month. You know, see, we was fucked up at one time. Like the brother said, you know, through the grace and power of the Most High, we found a video of the apostles. We were searching the truth, searching the Illuminati. The Lord gave it to us, you know. So you got, you got. It's always, it always through through the Most High is nothing impossible, man. The Most High can change a man like that if he want to, if he wants to, man. Say that the second time. Go ahead, up. You got a good bar. I would say, yeah, back up the elder. Then the scary part is they should they could place you. You know, that's why we got always they be humble. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, the Lord will replace you with a guy that look like you in the truth, man. <laughs> we didn't seen that happen a couple of times. You know, Jake be having the Jake be having them braids and them cornrows and shit. And the guy look just like you, man. In another state somewhere. All right. You was what the that's why the Lord said, man, I can I can I can raise these these rocks up to do what you do, man. You can't never get uh proud or get an ego in this truth. Like you you just some you just you just the man. You know, to the most the most I looking at that shit, man. You looking at you you looking deep, deep off in your heart, all right, and seeing that, what kind of character, what kind of what kind of uh what kind of man that you really are, man. And there's there's no room for pride and ego, never no room for pride and ego, man. You gotta stay humble. And all that you know, all the breakdowns, scriptures, uh prophecies, uh history that you know, you gotta stay fucking humble, man. Remain humble, man. Through through it all. You might get a position, you might you might be liked by this one and that one. Stay humble, man. And act like the act like every day is your first day in the truth, man. Go ahead, out. Yeah, your first and your last day. Yeah. And it could be. <laughs> but yeah, going back to uh you know, in Ezekiel, I believe it's 18, it, was, it speaks about how somebody could be wicked their whole life, but when they repent, their wickedness is forgotten of them. And if you're in the truth, all your righteousness can be forgotten if you repent and go back into the world. So a person will look at that like, that's that's not fair. That doesn't make any sense. That's not right. How can somebody be wicked their whole life and then repent and then get get the same penny? Well, Yahweh is like, look, it's my penny. All right. How, who are you to to tell the Lord how he's supposed to cast out his pennies, man. Yeah, I, mean, I want this person to make it. I want that person to make it. You can't measure your, your sins against another person and, and tell the Lord he's going off. That's bugged out, that. man. Let me get that. The Lord, the Lord was talking this, doing this thing in this in this chapter. Let me uh, get it. Push up. Get uh second Corinthians 10 and 12 to back that one. And I got one for you too, after everybody gets this. Okay. Yeah, second Corinthians I got it. I got it. Right got it. The one I was looking for. Yeah, this is this is Romans chapter nine, verse eighteen. Therefore, as he, the Most High, mercy on whom he will have mercy, and upon whom he will, he will harden. Thou will say unto me, Why do thou? Why? Why do he yet find fault? For he have for who who has resisted his will? Nay, nay, but oh man. Who are thou that resisted against the most high? It says, uh, what it says, shall the thing form say unto him that formed it, Why hast thou made me thus? Question mark. All right, it says, it says, uh, has not the potter power, has not the potter power over the clay of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and another to dishonor? Question mark. You got it out. Okay, and that's plain, man. The Lord is the potter. All right, we're just we're lumps of clay, man. We're literally earthen vessels, man. Our bones, our flesh, we're in these bodies, and the Lord is in control of the elements. So for you to tell the Lord that He's going off because He forgave this person, again, you you're in the wrong spirit. This is going to break it down further. Get that uh, Second Corinthians out. Okay, you said uh, two and ten. Uh, ten and twelve. Ten and twelve. Okay. The Second Corinthians ten and twelve. <laughs> It says, for we dare not make ourselves of the number or compare ourselves with some that condemn themselves. Commend. They measure. Hmm? Read it again. Commend themselves. So like, but some, I'll read it over. It's, um, for we dare not make ourselves of the number or compare ourselves with some that commend themselves, but they measuring them measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves are not wise 
right? It's not wise for you to compare yourself with yourself, for you to compare yourself to another man and say, well, look, I didn't do that sin. I'm not like him. I didn't, I didn't uh, break that, that commandment. I mean, I broke all these other commandments, but that's cool. That guy, he broke that other commandment. That's not cool. That's, that's off. You're in a totally reprobate spirit and you really, you commending yourself. Like, look at me. I, I didn't got the most fringes. I, you know, I keep the Sabbath perfectly every Friday. Jake don't even know when the Sabbath is, but bragging about keeping the Sabbath perfectly, just bugged out, man. That's completely, you know, but that's a whole nother topic. But you got Jake that they pervert the Sabbath so that it falls on the day that they're off work so they can commend themselves for keeping the Sabbath. It's a total reprobate spirit, right? None of us are keeping the Sabbath perfectly. It's Jake, Jake got to get up and go to work tomorrow, man, right after the Shabbat lesson. So why would you boast in your, your own, your ability to keep the law perfectly? Why do you need a savior? Yeah, Jake wear all type of different fabrics. Yeah. All day long, man. And put fringes on it. Yeah, put fringes on it, man. Bugged out, man. You got a 10% a polyester shirt. You putting fringes on it to remind you to, to not mix fabric. We we need mercy and grace at the end of the day. You're not going to keep the commandments perfectly in Babylon. Anyone teaching you that is off. They're in the spirit of haughtiness, and they're trying to put that spirit on you. And you see you see whole congregations in the spirit of, of pride and boasting in themselves, comparing themselves to other men. Yeah. We're all sinners. I ain't seen it down here, man. Jake got the straight out of Israel shirt with fringes on it, man. Long yeah. Phoenix fringes on it. Walking down the street with shades on, man. Looking looking stupid as hell. Fringes on the dog, fringes yeah. on the car. Yeah, fringes on his eyes. I mean, the other nigga, man, the nigga had the fringes covering his eyes, man. Say crazy as hell, man. All I see is the commandments. Huh? <laughs> yeah. All I see is the law. Yeah, just bugged yeah. out, man. The mystic yeah. crib. Yeah. yeah, he got the crib, the crib do rag around the neck. Jay crazy as hell, man. The whole gadite. Nigga's crazy, man. The crib gadite. Yeah, shit crazy, man. You got it, Kaya. Yeah, the law. The law actually on this side kills you man the letter of the law is killing you man really that's why the grace is in, in place or the favor is in place man so the mercy is in place because the law actually kills you man for something that actually gave us life with the commandments which it does the letter of the law on this side kills us because we're in captivity so if there wasn't grace all right and there wasn't mercy jacob be out of here man even those who think and they holding the law down, man. All right? The letter kill it. The letter kills you. So that means mercy is out the way. So there's no more mercy for you if something is killing you, right? So the law on this side, Jake think he's just getting it in heavily, man. You got to pray to the Lord. <laughs> you got to pray to the Lord that the Lord just allow you to just continue, man, to do his will. That's really what you got to pray, man. To be in his will, no part of his will by grace through faith. You got it, bro. Uh, yeah, his, his will on the right hand because he does have a left yeah. hand. Will, yeah, there we go. Yeah, why? The guy there you go. Why? Yeah. Through why? Wait, for what? For what? What is the purpose? For what? Hmm. That's not glorifying what? you. How was I? You glor glorifying yourself. Oh, yeah, read what? that uh, verse 12 yeah. again and read on down to 14. Bible to, to boast. To boast in the law is to show disrespect towards mercy and grace. God. Basically, bro. Yeah. Think about that. No, like seriously, the boast I, I, I'm doing is like it's disrespectful to mercy and grace, man. Literally. Yeah. You got it. Yeah, you're you got saying it. you don't need grace. Exactly. Basically, you don't need the mercy. Yeah, you don't need your house shy. You can keep the law perfectly. God. You don't need to be saved. You grow over here. You got the 613, you you know, you're doing that one two walk with it, with the with the with the 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 whatever that is over the blinders over your face, man. The 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 the, the fringe the blinder fringes over your French face, vision. man. French vision. You got it, all right? Yeah. Yeah, Take bug down. This uh second Corinthians 10 and 12 again. It says, for we did not make ourselves of the number or compare uh -huh. ourselves with some that commend themselves, but they measuring themselves by themselves 
and comparing themselves among themselves are not wise. Right, they're not wise, man. You measuring yourself by yourself is not wise. When you measure yourself next to Yahusha, you realize, okay, he's here, I'm all the way down here. When you measure yourself by yourself, you're always gonna be on a level. Like, yeah, look what I did yesterday. Oh yeah, look at that, look at that lesson I did the other day. Yeah, look look how brotherly I am. Look what I look at me, me, me. When you compare yourself to yourself, you're always gonna be looking at yourself in a favorable light. But when you compare yourself to Yahusha, you realize how much mercy and grace you need. Keep going. Verse 13, mm -hmm. but we will not boast of things without our measure, but according to the measure of the rule which the Most High had distributed to us, a measure to reach even unto you. God. For, for we stretch not ourselves beyond our measure, as though we reach not unto you. For we are come as far as to you also in preaching the gospel of Hamashiach. Right, and that's what it's about, preaching the gospel of Hamashiach. All right, saying what the Lord is going to do. The Lord is coming back to do this. This prophecy says Yahweh is going to do this. This prophecy says Yahweh is going to do that. Okay, World War III is coming. The MOTB is coming. We preach the gospel, which goes into the destruction of this kingdom and us being delivered out of this into, into uh, incorruptible bodies so that we can keep the commandments perfectly. We're preaching the gospel. We're not preaching of ourselves. We're not boasting of ourselves. All we have is the word, and we have faith that that's all we need. Jake and, and these other camps, they, they really think that they need a gimmick. They need uh, mixtapes. They need a rap battle. They need uh, elaborate Passovers, all of these things to, to hook people with gimmicks. But we, we actually believe that this gospel in and of itself is enough. It's enough for us to obtain mercy, grace, and salvation that we're not worthy of. But uh, I know, Kapar, you had another one. And Samak, you had one. I know, Rai, you had one. I just got a couple more. We can wrap it up. The yeah. Elder Red Rose, Kabar, the other one you had? How you say? The Elder, when you read the Sirach, that's the other one you had, or you had another one? Yeah, I got another one. Okay, you got it. <clears throat> okay, it's a, it's a second answer, it's a seven. I'm going to start verse 62. And I answered then and said, I know, Lord, that the, that the Most High is called merciful, and that he that he in that he have mercy upon them which are not yet to come into the world. And that's right. Yeah, that's, that's the back to a reincarnation as well. And also, a that back to the point that we had sins committed to our past life. You know, because it's a he had mercy upon us which we are not yet come to the world. You know what I'm saying? It said uh, also, and upon those that also that turn to his law, where they represent us, they will return back to the law, statute, and commandments, hey, he have no mercy upon us, you know? And uh, I say he, and that he is patient and long-suffering those that have sinned as his creatures. Hey, long, hey the, the law is a uh, long-suffering and patient was, hey, he know that hey, we is a uh, wicked flesh that's subject to, hey, go off. You know, that's, that's why uh, he have no mercy upon us. You know, he said, uh, and that he is bountiful, he is bountiful, for he is ready to give where it's needed. And that he is of a great mercy, for he multiplied ply more and more mercies to them that have are that are present and that are past, and also to them which are to come, which are to come. Because he had he had mercy upon us, hey. Since we committed our past life, we committed in this life, and also hey, you know, hey. Even in the future, because hey, uh, as long as we in this uh, wicked flesh, hey, we gonna go off, you know. So hey, Lord God, hey, must must that mercy. Yeah, this why say uh, four verse uh, six seven. For if he shall not multiply his mercies, the world will not continue with them that are inherited therein. You know, hey, so hey, we all be done away with if it were for the Lord's mercy. So that is uh, the cut to uh, what Jay say think uh, their worst is gonna get them salvation. No, it's only eight, that mercy, and that's it. You know what I'm saying? That's it. Okay, that's beautiful. And going back to Psalms, if the Lord was to mark iniquities, who who would stand? There would be no Israelites left to save if the Lord didn't have mercy and grace on us. But you got it right. Okay. And just to back up with uh, Elder Brother Yakanan, you said a little bit earlier about, you know, remaining humble in this thing, no matter, you know, how much knowledge or, you know, understanding of things you have, which we can clearly see. A lot of these camps, 
a lot of these other camps and a lot of these other Israelites, they don't even have the 100% truth, but they, they act as though they have it and act prideful. They, they like to, you know, compare themselves and even usurp some of our, 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 our great forefathers in the truth, but they don't follow their example. If they would follow their example, they would see what the humility of the true men of the Lord were. Uh, look at King David. He was a man after the most high's heart and clearly of that elect number, but he constantly asked for mercy from the most high. And he's a perfect example of mercy from the most high for committing sins unto death. He committed two sins unto death, that one that played into the other. He committed adultery with the, the one Israelite's wife. And then what? He, he murdered him. He had him put into a situation to where he got put to death. But what? He had the sure mercies of David, and the, all the sure mercies of the Most High, which is ultimately what we hope to receive. As the Most High says, I, I require not sacrifice and oblations, which a lot of these other camps, what? They, they say, oh, we, it's all about the law and having the image out there. But what did the Most High really say? I, what I truly require is a contrite and a humble spirit. But this is Psalms chapter 50. I'm going to start at verse 9. Hide thy face from my sins, and this is King David speaking, and blot out all mine iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O Most High, and renew a right spirit within me. Here's the point. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Point blank period. King David, again, clearly a man of the Lord praying to the Most High not to take the Holy Spirit from him and have mercy on him. So if King David a, was in that, that humble and contrite spirit, praying for the most, mercy of the Most High, how much more us? I got a scripture to go to, go to with both of you. It's an example. All right. It's an example going into what, what, what Raya is talking about and what uh, Amawai was talking about. You can break it down, Amawai. This is uh, John 8 and 3. And it says, and scribes and Pharisees brought unto them a woman taken in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, they said unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Now Moses and the law commanded us that that should that that should such be stoned, but what says thou? Question mark. And it says, This they said, tempting him that he might might have to accuse him, but it says, but Yahweh Shai stooped down and with his finger wrote on the ground as though he heard them not. Mm -hmm. right? And it says, so when they continue asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, he that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. And, all right, and it says, and again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. All right, and they and and they which heard it begin to uh, convict, convict, being convicted by their own conscience. Without went out one by one, beginning at the elders, even unto the last. And Yahweh Shai was left alone, and the woman standing in the midst. All right, that's one example. All right, then it says, it goes on to say this. It says, uh, when Yahweh Shai had lifted up himself and saw none but the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where are thou thy accusers? Has no man uh, condemned thee? She said, No man, Lord. And Yahweh Shai said unto her, This is a point. Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. So the point was, I'm making a point with y'all. You had, you had those accusers, all right, that couldn't stand before because they had sins. And then you got the woman at the end. You always try telling them, "Look, this don't sin no more, man. Repenting don't sin no more, man." But go ahead, I, you you can break it down how you wanted to too. You know, either one of you brought us. Go ahead. Ah. Yeah. So. You had a lot of our people. They were trying to catch up Yahweh Shai. They didn't. They didn't care about the law. They didn't care about the woman. They were really trying to catch Yahweh Shai by by putting them in a betwixt. Okay, if we if we stone her. But he he realized. Okay, all you niggas are wicked. And he he sat down. He wrote a list of sins that he knew they committed. And they looking at the list like, man, okay, if we stone her, we got to stone ourselves. All right, going back to what Matthew the seventh chapter. All right, you got that that beam in your eye, but you you're trying to point out the coal in someone else's eye, man. 
he he perceived that in them. And that's really the spirit a lot of our people have. Let's stone this person for, for doing this offense without examining yourself. Once you examine yourself, you know that you're not worthy of mercy. You know that you've done so much more than people that you're you're pointing the finger at. But Jake, it's easy to it's easy to look at someone else and say, look what they're doing wrong. Look what look what judgment needs to pass on this person. But when you examine yourself, it's like, man, I just I just need mercy. I need I need I need to be changed. You got it, Kaya. Yeah, and the and the thing in that when he bought the woman and there was accusing her, what was the men that yeah. she had did the adultery with? It's just yeah. like okay, yeah. well, just the woman. They're like, where was the men that she committed all these adultery with? Like, yeah. what so was that? You can't commit adultery by yourself. It you can't commit adultery by yourself. So where was the men she committed adultery with, man? Yeah. But they do that in Islam, which is totally <laughs> off. They'll uh they'll put the woman to death and then stone the guy for committing adultery. You're supposed to put both of them to death if you're so righteous and about the law. But anyway, uh Kalai, if you get Luke 18 and start at nine, God. that's the prime example. You know, Yahawashai with the woman. That's one example. It's another one of the spirit that we're supposed to be in and the spirit we're not supposed to be in. This uh the book of Luke, chapter 18 and verse 9, and it reads, And he spake this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. Certain, <laughs> read that again. I, this is, this is huh. the point right here. Verse 9, and it reads, And he spake this parable this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. Right. So this parable is going into people that trust in themselves that they're righteous and despise others. OK, I'm not a sinner like this person. I, I'm i not wicked like like Suhi Hana. You know, there's no way she could be saved, but I can't. You know, keep going. Verse 10 It's in red letters as well. It reads, two men went up into the temple to pray the one a Pharisee and the other a publican. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus himself. It's like it. Let me read it again. It says, The Pharisee stood and prayed thus himself, Yahweh, I with himself, Yahweh, I thank thee that I am not as other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even. As this publican, I fast twice in the week. I give tithes of all that I possess. Right. So this guy, he's praying to the Lord, thanking the Lord for not making him like this other person. Think about how bugged out that is. You're not, you're not asking the Lord for mercy. You're not asking the Lord for grace. You're not thanking the Lord for what He's blessed you with. You're thanking the Lord that I'm, I'm not like this nigga over here. That's. <laughs> That's a Thank total you. reprobate spirit. If you're praying, thinking about another man's sins and how you're not like them, that's that's bugged out. But keep going. Verse 13, and it says, the publican standing afar off would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, Yahweh, be merciful unto me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other for every one that exalted himself shall be abased and he that humbled himself shall be exalted right so the point is this man was beating on his chest like lord just just give me mercy he didn't even feel proud enough to to lift his head up while he was praying he was like look i need mercy he wasn't commending himself he wasn't boasting in his works he was saying, I'm a sinner. I need I need favor. I need forgiveness. That's the spirit we're supposed to be in. And this parable is going out to anyone that thinks that they're more holy and righteous than someone else. When ultimately, at the end of the day, none of us are worthy of mercy. We all we all require uh, faith, uh, grace and mercy of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. Otherwise, we're not going to make it. There's no way around that. And again, anyone telling you that you, you're keeping the Sabbath perfectly, you're keeping this law perfectly, you're, you're bugged out, man. And again, it's very disrespectful to Yahweh Shai's sacrifice. He sacrificed four sinners. So you're acting like you're not a sinner. It's like, okay, all right. We're going to find out, man. You're going to be, 
So all those, all of those, uh, every Israelite that wants to boast in the law, you're going to be judged according to the law. Okay, we boast in Yahweh Shai, so we we hope to be judged of Him and His mercy. But uh, we can, if it further had anything else, we could close it out. Yeah, I've been holding. I got a priest up here. Come on, you got us some out here. Come on, it's Job four and seventeen. Shall a mortal man be more just than the Most High? Shall a man be more pure than his Maker? Hmm. And the answer is no. And it's just that simple, bro. Bottom line, our mercy and our grace comes from Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. He's the one that's perfect, not us. All right, uh, Bashar, we can we can end on Psalms 86 and 5, Bashar. Psalms 86 and 5. It says, for thou, the Lord, art good and ready to forgive and plenteous in mercy unto all them that call upon thee. All right, plenteous in mercy. That's the only reason we want to be saved. The Lord is plenteous in mercy. If he was, if the Lord looked at us the way we look at ourselves, you know, judging other men based on, on this tit for tat according to the law, then none of us would be saved. But fortunately, the law is plenteous in mercy. He's like, look, I know y'all are messed up. I know y'all are in Babylon. I know y'all are off. But I sent down my only begotten son so that he could cover y'all when I destroyed this place. And Abarathe's eye, we were all covered by the bloody Hawashai when all hell breaks loose. That's the only reason we're doing this. So Abarathe's eye, this lesson was edifying to the elect. We're going to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, and Shabbat Shalom to the hopeful elect. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom.